To use your scientific calculator for trigonometry, the first thing you need to do is figure out what kind of calculator you have. This first calculator is one where if I type in 9 times 6, I do not actually see 9 times 6 appear on the screen. On this calculator, if I type in 9 times 6, you'll notice that 9 times 6 actually appears on the screen. When I'm talking about calculators, I will talk about what to do on a calculator where you do not see things appear on the screen versus a calculator where you do see what you type in appear on the screen. To use trigonometry on your calculator, the first thing you need to do is get it into degrees. On this calculator, there's a little three-letter display at the top that says DEG for degrees. On this calculator, there is a much smaller letter D that appears to show degrees. If a calculator is not in degrees, it may say RAD or R, or it may say GRAD or the letter G. To switch between modes is different on different calculators. On this calculator, I would use the D R G button, which stands for degrees, radians, gradients. And if you press the DRG button, it will cycle between degrees, radians, and gradients. This type of calculator, when it goes in your backpack, is most likely to switch into a different mode because it's so easily switched between just pressing a button. This calculator, it's a little more challenging to change the mode. I notice up at the top, it's got degrees, radians, and gradients, and it has a number assigned to them. You use the mode button, so mode, and then if I press 5, it will take it into radians. If I do mode and 4, which it says up here, it puts it into degrees. This calculator also has a mode button. And when I press the mode button, it says comp, SD, and reg. But if I press the mode button again, you can continue pressing the button until you find what you want. So if I press the button twice, I have a choice of degrees, radians, and gradients. And since I want degrees, I would press 1. And I should notice the little D show up to say that it's in degrees. Now this calculator is a little bit trickier. Um, for this one, I have to do shift and mode, and then it will bring up a wide variety of things to choose, and to put it into degrees, I'm gonna pick the letter, the number three. Okay, so we're gonna start by evaluating sine of 30. And I'm gonna use the calculator where you do not see what you type in on the screen first. On these calculators, you're always going to press your sine, cos, and tan buttons after you type in the number. So to do sine of 30, I actually would type in 30 and then press the sine button to get 0 0.5. If I wanted to do cosine of 100, I would put in 100 first and then hit the cosine button. On the calculators where you do see what's on the screen, you actually do the order that you see written down. So here, if I can see the word sign on the screen, when I press the sign button, you type in sign first. So I would do sign and then type in the 30 afterwards and hit equals. Now this calculator tells me that it's one half or it has an SD button which will change between fractions and decimals and if I press that it gives me my 0 0.5. If I wanted to try the cosine of 100 I would press cosine and then type in 100 and it gives me the same answer that I got with the other calculator. If I try the ones on the other side of the page you'll notice these ones have a little negative 1 next to it. This is the inverse tan. It's what we use to undo a tan. We're often using it if we're calculating an angle. 
To do the inverse tan, you'll notice on your calculator above the sine, cos, and tan buttons, you have a sine with a little negative one, a cosine negative one, and a tan negative one. And to access those buttons, we usually use the shift or the second button that matches the color of those words. So on this calculator, where I do not see what I type in on the screen, I'm going to put in 1.2345. And then instead of just pressing tan, I press shift and then tan. And I end up with 50.9909.8611. Okay. To try the next one, I notice that it's a fraction. So the first thing I need to do is punch in 2 divided by 3 into the calculator. So 2 divided by 3. And then really important that we hit equals before we do shift and sign. If you do not press equals, you will not get the correct answer. To use the calculator where you do see what you type in on the screen, to do the inverse tan of 1.2345, I would first find my tan button. I see that the inverse tan is yellow, so I'm going to press the yellow button and then the tan to bring up the tan negative 1, and then I'm going to type in 1.2345. And you'll notice that I get the same answer as I did with the other calculator. To do the inverse sine of 2 over 3, I'm going to do my yellow button and sine. And then very important to have a bracket. If you do not have a bracket on your calculator, you should put one in. And then 2 divided by 3 which did not show up. <laughs> so sine bracket 2 divided by 3. You can close the bracket or not, it's up to you. And then press equals to get the same answer that we had before.